When we kicked off the HAB Challenge, our team learned about Colonel Kittinger and his feet in the 1960s, where he ascended in a high altitude air balloon and observed the effects of the atmosphere on his body. His curiosity and work in aerospace inspired us to participate in this challenge. Our experiment was intended to test the effect of high altitude atmospheric conditions in space on the accuracy of blood glucose monitor strips. We considered this experiment important because it's highly likely that, in the future, many individuals who wish to travel or work in space may have diabetic or pre-diabetic conditions. For them to realize their goals, they will need access to consistent and accurate blood sugar monitoring. This is more than a medical issue. It is a diversity issue that will help ensure that individuals with certain disabilities are afforded the opportunity to participate in the exploration of the next great frontier. For our initial experiment, we prepared two capsules, the flight capsule and the control capsule. Each capsule contained 10 one-touch Vario test strips. Most of the capsules were packaged and shipped to the launch site in Indiana. The flight capsule was put in a high-altitude balloon. It was sent 99,962 feet into the air and was in the air for 4 hours and 1 minute. The control capsule remained on the ground. As the balloon gained altitude, the flight capsule experienced a fluctuation in temperature, type of radiation, humidity, and possible exposure to light. To test the strips contained in both capsules, we placed a glucose monitor control solution on the glucose strips in, in lieu of blood. We then inserted the strips into the one-touch Vario Flex blood glucose monitoring system. It is important to note that glucose monitor control solutions are used to confirm proper function when there is a suspected issue with test strip integrity. We use the level 3 glucose control solution, which re should return an average of 102 mg per deciliter and have an average reading of 120 mg, mg per deciliter. Our control strip average was 152.11 mg per deciliter. The flight capsule test strip average was 146.89 mg per deciliter. Therefore, both sets of strips were not displaying results within the normal range of glucose control solution. Given these findings, we immediately turned our attention to what might have occurred to produce these results and what impact they would have on our working hypothesis. We contacted individuals and organizations well known for their work with diabetes and diabetes related technologies. These organizations include the NIH, the International Diabetes Federation, and the American Diabetes Association. We also reached out to the manufacturers of the one-touch glucose monitor and test strips. There, a medical safety officer stated that the prolonged storage outside the parameters can have an adverse effect on performance due to the product degradation. In an effort to better understand what might have happened, we introduced a new protocol into our experiment, what we called the Super Control Group. It consisted of 10 test strips that were stored in a one-touch ultra strip container that blocks external environmental factors such as radiation, pressure, and light. The Super Control averaged 119.70 mg per deciliter. The average accurate measurement of the blood glucose monitors with Control Solution 3 should have reported 120 mg per deciliter if there were no outside factors. This supported our belief that the test strips in our original control capsule were affected by outside factors and thus could not function as a true control. After we completed our Super Control group experimentation, we reached out to a pharmacist and a doctor online to get their professional perspective. We discussed and analyzed our data with them and learned that oxidation, temperature, and humidity all impact the accuracy of blood glucose monitor test strips. A final piece of data was revealed when we closely examined the HAB launch video. As we rewatched it, we noticed that the control capsule boxes had been left half open on the table. Thus, our control capsule was exposed to direct ceiling lights. This, among other factors, could have rendered the improbable as a scientific control. Because we did not have valid control, the results of our experiment were inconclusive. However, we learned a great deal through this process and are eager to try again. When we do this project again, we will take steps to improve the integrity of the control capsule. This will include keeping the test strips in their original case, ensuring that the case has a diameter such that it will fit into the experiment capsule scent. This will help minimize the impact of outside influences. Our squadron members have been excited about this experiment process and what we do. That's one of the reasons we intend to retain a portion of any prize money we are awarded at the squadron level and use it to fund future HABC endeavors. We would give the other half of the prize money to a local diabetes center in hopes that our charitable gift will provide some comfort and hope to those challenged by this disease. In closing, we wish to thank Colonel Kittinger and the HABC organizing team for their hard work and inspiration. Our HAB challenge has stimulated our interest in space medicine, and we're excited to see where future HAB challenges and the ever-evolving space medicine discipline take us. Mm -hmm.